the reality is that it becomes very present and you actually don't perceive it into the future if you have a balanced orientation because you strategized and mitigated the risk and can see how you can do it and yet now you see there's nothing in the way when you do you get rewarded by a balanced chemistry Every perception we have has a ratio to it. If we perceive and we're conscious of the upsides, the positives, the advantages, the pleasure side, and we are unconscious of the downside, the negative, the pain side, the disadvantages, the more polarized it is, the more it becomes unobtainable. It's like if you imagine a magnet with a positive negative pole and tried to cut the magnet in half and get only the positive pole, if you cut it, you would find out that it has a positive negative and a positive negative. And so often human beings strive for a one-sided magnet and eventually found out the other side of the magnet always comes with it. And so a fantasy is an assumption of a monopole, a one-sided outcome. That's one form of fantasy. So anytime you're striving for something that's one-sided, a pleasure without a pain, it's like getting in a relationship. And maybe in the beginning, you might be infatuated with somebody, might get a dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin rush. And you might assume, oh my God, this one is going to be different. This one's all positive. It has no downsides. And then a day, a week, a month, a year, five years later, you find out it has downsides. So while you had the one-sidedness in your awareness and you had a subjective bias and you were seeing only one side, by definition, you had a fantasy about what it was going to be like. A fantasy is a monopolar perspective instead of seeing both sides of the magnet. That's one aspect of a fantasy. The next aspect of a fantasy is to pursue something that you think is important to you that isn't really truly important to you. <clears throat> I have had people... Uh, tell me they want to be financially independent. But what they really mean is I want to spend money like the lifestyles of the rich and famous. And they don't really want to save and actually invest money and actually be patient. They want immediate gratification. So they say they want to be financially independent, but they actually have a set of values that say, I want to meet it gratification. I want to buy consumables that depreciate. So anytime you set a goal that is not aligned with what you really value, or anytime you set a goal that's really one-sided, by definition, the more extreme that polarization is to one side and the more extremely it is away from what you really value, you have fantasies. A fantasy is something, or one third one is something you say you want. It may be aligned with your values. It may be balanced, but you don't have a strategy for it. And because you don't have a strategy for it and you haven't chunked it down and put a, a plan of action into it, um, you're pursuing it in a haphazard way, and to some degree, you're going to end up self-defeating. So all three of those could be, by definition, a fantasy. One-sided outcomes, monopolar, something that's not really truly as high on your values as you thought, that you just think is important to you. And one, and another one is the one that you didn't really think of a strategy. Like, I want to go to Mars without doing all the engineering that it takes, like Elon Musk has had to do and all the ups and downs and pains and pleasures and trials and tribulations to get there, those are fantasies. Depends on the goal. Um, we, ha we have, it, when we set a goal, if it's a true objective, I, I'd like to dis differentiate for a second. Uh, pardon me for finishing up the first question. Hope you don't mind. But we have a set of values in life. And whenever we're setting goals that are aligned with what we value most, they're more likely to be objectives. Objectives are balanced. Object objectivity means balanced mind, neutral. Subjectivity means polarized mind, opinion, subjectively biased. <clears throat> so anytime we're setting a goal that is truly aligned with what we value most, we have the highest probability of having a balanced objective. Anytime we set a goal that's not really important to us and we're striving for something that we think is important but isn't we go into our amygdala and we want to avoid pain and seek pleasure and we want a monopole which is a fantasy so if all of a sudden you have a fantasy when you set that and you think it's a goal 
your neurochemistry is quite different. The, the, as, you, as you're fantasizing about the goal, you're thinking about the goal, while you're in the, the fantasy, you've got dopamine and serotonin firing off. And the content of the fantasy is going to determine what areas of the brain. So if you have a visual fantasy or an auditory one or an auditory visual one or a smell associated with it, whatever you're putting in there, the various regions of the brain are going to be doing it. The olfactory uh, component may be, or it may be the temporal lobe for audio, or it may be the visual lobe and the occipital lobe for, <clears throat> for visual. It may be a, 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 something that you're imagining yourself running in a marathon or something, and you might activate the motor cortex. So the areas of the brain that are firing, the various transmitters that are facilitative, like glutamate or uh, inhibiting, inhibitoring, which is GABA, those firing uh, neurons uh, will, will go off in addition to the things that are pleasure. And anytime you perceive that you're getting your outcome, you get the dopamine, you get the serotonin, you get the encephalons, endorphins, all the pleasure f compounds. And anytime you perceive, I can't seem to see it in my mind's eye and I'm frustrated, I don't know how I'm going to get there. You get other compounds, osteocalcin, uh, norepinephrine, epinephrine, um, histamine. So there you get a series of neurotransmitters going off based on whether you perceive you can get it. Is it a fantasy? Do you have a strategy? <clears throat> What's the content? So many areas of the brain could be firing off on, a, on one goal, or you could be really focused on a goal in one area and just really activate a certain area of the brain. If you're playing piano, the fine motor activities of that might be involved. And you're maybe hearing the audio in the temporal lobe. So depending on the area of the brain that's going to be activated based on the content of what the goal is, based on uh, is it a motor goal? Is it a sensory goal? Is it a piece of art you're looking at? Or is it some skill that you're going to do with your motor actions, your muscle actions? But most goals eventually create dopamine uh, when you perceive you're making progress towards it or you can see it in your mind. See, the difference between an objective also and a fantasy is a fantasy is perceived in the imagination in the future and an objective is seen in the now and if you study the the goals you'll see that that the the, the real and the imagined um seem like they fire off at the in the brain but the reality is that it becomes very present and you actually don't perceive it into the future if you have a balanced orientation because you strategized and mitigated the risk and can see how you can do it and yet now you see there's nothing in the way when you do, you get rewarded by a balanced chemistry, not a polarized chemistry. So many people are pursuing fantasies, looking for a polarized chemistry, and then going through what is called a sequential oscillation, where now they're having anxiety and phobias and anxieties and distresses. I can't get this one-sided outcome. And then you get a chemistry going in the opposite direction. And you got vacillating chemistry instead of actually being a true objective that's balanced, that you've mitigated the risks on, you've thought through all the different challenges, you see in your mind's eye a strategy and you become present with it. And then you feel it's impossible for you not to fulfill it. It's destined. That's the time you, that's, that's when you know you're living congruently with your highest value. You're really present with the objective. That's the one that has the highest probability of you seeing in your mind's eye the strategy, how to do it and just taking action spontaneously. Most scientists, when they think of a goal, they're thinking mostly of fantasies. And when they look like they're making progress of it, um, they're, they're, they're going to get a dopamine fix. Dopamine is one of the key elements. That it's, it's, it fires all over the brain. There's many dopamine uh, receptors and neurons that release it. But the amygdala is where the main center is. It's a desire center. And so anytime you get a desire um, met, you automatically get a, a bit of dopamine. But if it's actually a goal that is really an objective, not a fantasy, uh, you'll get a more balanced chemistry. In fact, fantasies create bipolar responses. It creates the nightmare to counterbalance it. And I always say that depression, which is an imbalanced chemistry, a, 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 a depression is a comparison of your current reality to a fantasy you hold on to. So whenever you have something that you don't have a strategy for that's not really aligned with your values, that's one-sided, that's unobtainable, Depression is the compensation for it. So if you're pursuing that, you can vacillate back and forth between these two sides and both poles lead to different opposite chemistries. But if you set a real objective and you mitigate the risk and you're pursuing challenges that really inspire you, you have a balanced chemistry. It's not just dopamine. It's, 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 
you get both sides of the autonomic response and both sides of the brain because now you see it in your mind's eye. You see the strategy with the left hemisphere. You see it visually in the right hemisphere. You literally have a balanced chemistry. And the reward is not a, a localized uh, amygdala dopamine response. It's a more holistic brain response with all the different components in the mind that you see fulfilled in the, in the vision of it and the auditory feeling. You can hear it, smell it. It's a gestalt. The more gestalt your, your objective is, the more the brain is engaged and the more um, glucose and oxygen is, it's actually the best weight reduction program you got. Pursuing challenging and uh, pursuing challenges that inspire you, that are objectives that you have that serve people, that are meaningful to you, is probably the most powerful way to keep your body in shape. <laughs> your, your, your neurochemistry utilizes glucose and oxygen more than even your muscles. And it's just amazing what that can do. I, I tell people that don't even waste your time pursuing goals that aren't really true objectives that are deeply meaningful to you that serve. Those are the ones that really get the most balanced chemistry and you get more, more than dopamine. You get dopamine, oxytocin, but you also get the chemistries that are pursuing challenges. There's a thing called hormesis that when you actually have uh, challenging chemistries, you help your immune system. Pursuing challenges that inspire you is one of the keys to making most powerful goals and objectives that you can. Well, anytime you're going after a fantasy, and I, I'm gonna say, there's a, if you can imagine a, a fantasy down here and, and a gradation of goals to objectives up here, when you're going after an objective that has both sides, the chemistry is different than if you're going off to a fantasy. You have a bipolar uh, type of chemistry. And so what happens when you go after a fantasy um, you're automatically setting yourself up for the nightmare because it's not obtainable. Uh, the Buddha said it really nicely, according to the writings of the Buddha anyway, who knows what's actually he wrote, but, but the Buddha says the desire for that which is unobtainable, the fantasy, and the desire to avoid that which is unavoidable, the nightmare, is a source of human suffering. So people don't get the eye how important it is to, to set goals that are really aligned with your highest value. That's why in the Breakthrough Experience program that I teach, I've been teaching all these years, 32 years plus, um, I make sure they make a distinction between a fantasy and a real objective. Goals range all the way from fantasies to real objectives. People call them that. I've seen New Year's resolutions that are complete fantasies. I've seen people set goals that are complete fantasies. And then they have letdowns and then they have depressions and then they end up beating themselves up. It's so important to set goals that are truly aligned to what you value most. Make sure that you have a strategy in your mind, thinking it through. That's the, the purpose of the executive center in the forebrain, the medial prefrontal cortex. The purpose of that is to transform fantasies into true objectives. That's because you increase the probability of achievement. And it's all probability. You have a probability of measuring system in the frontal cortex. It's trying to basically do it based on all the data you see and the probability of achieving it. If you perceive that you can achieve it and you exceed what you did, you get one response. If you don't feel like you're getting what you did, you get another response. One increases the dopamine, one doesn't, and one balances the chemistries and one polarizes it further. And then we get depressed and frustrated. So whenever you're not feeling like you're achieving what you think is your goal, but it's actually a fantasy, uh, you change the chemistries into substance P, you get adrenaline, you get the sympathetic uh, fight or flight response because you feel like you're being challenged by obstacles or like a predator to your brain. You end up breaking down and catabolizing physiology. Um, it will undergo entropy and literally an aging process. So it's so important not to pursue fantasies, but to pursue true objectives. Now, some people think, well, the fantasy is just a big goal. I have nothing against the size of a goal or an objective. I mean, if, you, if, if Elon Musk can go to Mars and he'll make it there, uh, there's nothing wrong with a big goal. Audacious goals are fine, but you need to strategize them. You need to make sure it's aligned with your values. All the people are involved need to be aligned with the values and make sure when you're setting goals that if it's including lots of other people to get there, if it encompasses tens or thousands or hundreds or thousands of people to get that goal, make sure you think about what their highest value is, because if they're not engaged in doing it, you have a decreasing probability of them in doing it. You have to micromanage and push people uphill to get things done. So it's so important to make sure you're setting objectives that are truly high on your values, that are balanced, that have a real strategy, 
And that's what the executive center, that's what distinguishes us having meaning and having strategic planning that we have with foresight um, is what distinguishes us from some of the other mammals and other species. So yeah, that's the key. If you, if you don't get your goal, you're going to get feed. Your physiology is going to give you feedback to let you know that you're not pursuing a real objective. Anytime you're inauthentic, your physiology and your psychology will offer you feedback within in the sense of physiological symptoms and psychological symptoms to try to get you authentic on real objectives that are really important to you that really have a strategy.